what we're bringing to this is the accuracy and precision of knowing where the tractor is. That is our background service, there's Osnet's national service that provides the augmentation to the GPS devices on the machine that kind of supercharge them and locates the tractor to within two and a half centimetres on the field. So if you use a sort of commercial grade GPS like the sort of things that are found in the phone in your pocket, they're relying on seeing where the satellites are and working out therefore where the phone is through the atmosphere and the atmosphere produces all sorts of effects on the radio signal. So what we do by monitoring those radio signals from these 110 base stations around the country, we can produce local corrections that update the GPS to find that extra de degree of accuracy, that two and a half centimetres instead of five metres. So we've got a tractor now, but, but where does this kind of precision and this kind of technology take us in the future? I think this is twofold. In the sort of agricultural sector, it's moving towards more automation of the tractors so that you can work more efficiently. Maybe you have a tractor working in tandem with the manually operated one, and so you can be more efficient in the fields. I think more broadly though in terms of the technology where we're moving towards is actual autonomous vehicles on the public highway and in that case we need both that degree of precision from the GPS but also then yeah, much more detailed mapping about the sort of locality around the car to inform the car of where it is and where it's going. So what kind of conversations are Ordnance Survey having? I think it's like three or fourfold that this is with the car manufacturers and the, the people who supply them with data and information. It's the research community in this country which is very strong in this area. And then it's to government as well to discuss how this is brought into being and how regulation and insurance in this country will work in this area. I think it's threaded throughout this that you know, with, with the development of the vehicles itself as the National Mapping Agency, you know, it's our precise and accurate data that we predict that these things will uh, be relying on, especially where they're using sort of, GPS. And then as a national body as well, and still with our sort of, public task, it's setting out the framework and helping government look at the sort of, geographical component of how these things will actually work on the road. That project called Atlas, which is with a series of partners, is looking at those data requirements that I was talking about and the communications links on the vehicle. So in extremis, these things will have to work in isolation, but the opportunity is for them to receive over-the-air updates of data and to communicate amongst themselves about the sort of, state of the roads. So we're looking at how much data can be realistically passed over the networks of the future. How excited are you about what's happening now and where it's going. Really excited. I mean, this has a really, really interesting interplay between kind of our social fabric governance, but also this technical infrastructure, you know, how will these cars work? What, what is the intelligence that's needed within them to work out not only where they are and where they're going, but what other drivers are doing around them and how to interact with people on the roads as well.